diet and exercise versus video games and McDonald's. All right, squad, they got some noobs on their team. So I'm just gonna Leroy Jenkins into there. Okay, boomers, if you know what any of that means, then maybe you're not such a boomer after all. That was my son, and that was just a snippet of what it sounds like when he's gaming online in his room with his friends. I know, I know, I know. The topic of video games has been beat to death already. But listen, this lecture, it's not going to be the typical debate about whether or not they're bad for you. It's a discussion about how video games and technology have now kind of taken the attention away from kids outside getting healthy uh, cardiovascular exercise like they used to do back in the old days. You know, as the parent or the caretaker of young children, it is up to us to provide a healthy environment. And that means not just, um, you know, positive and nurturing rather than a negative and threatening atmosphere, but also to provide proper diet and exercise options. You know, so, so what's changed over the years? Um, one of the biggest things is that nowadays both parents work full-time jobs, or, or it's more common to see both parents working full-time jobs as to um, the old uh, June Cleaver staying at home while Ward Cleaver goes off to work during the day. Uh, you know, most households are two income to income families. So this leaves a lot of time for kids to be at home. And while they're at home, what is it that they can be doing? Well, when they're unsupervised, you know, not as many choose to say, read a book as watch a movie or play video games or get on the iPad or watch YouTube. I mean, there's just so many options now for what kids to do. The advan advancements in technology has really made a difference. Did you know that the first video game was um, constructed in 1940? Neither did I. At the World Fair, there was a, a video game um, that 90% of the time beat the human players. Now, obviously, things didn't really pick up until about the 1970s with the Atari um, games such as Pong, Donkey Kong, Space Invaders, uh, my personal favorite, Frogger. Um, that's when it kind of became more common to play video games. Then shortly after that, E.T. was released, and that was just a disaster because the market just kind of got saturated and people weren't playing video games as much. But then in 1985 came the Nintendo, and I mean, it was just onward and upward from there. And these days, the graphics on these games, I mean, they're just unreal. If you've seen, you know, the MLB game, my son can be a Major League Baseball player and play to a stadium where they cheer for him. And, and it, it, they're so lifelike, so, so real-like. Um, just actual situations, whether it's sports, racing, or war. And you can play on your phone, you can play on your computer, your Xbox or PlayStation, or on a handheld device like a Nintendo Switch. You can take them anywhere with you. Um, one article that I read said that um, like an average age for playing video games was 35 years old because a lot of times those who make commutes to work will get on their phone and play video games just to pass the time. When you're sitting and waiting at the doctor's office, it's something again, just to pass the time. So video games certainly just aren't for kids, but sticking to this lecture, um, I'm just talking about the importance of diet and exercise in this world that we live in now. And now getting away from the um, exercise portion, Speaking of diet, fast food for a fast paced life. We um, not only are we staying busier, but you've got fast food that's just so convenient. It's cheap, it's easy. So think of like Little Caesars, $5 hot and ready pizza, McDonald's Happy Meal, whether it's happy or not. 
Um, then you've got Taco Bell with their value menu. And then Super Size, which really isn't a thing anymore, but let's be honest, have you ordered a medium drink from Whataburger lately? It's 32 ounces for the medium. The large is 44 ounces. So I really don't know that we can say that Super Size is not such a thing anymore. You know, in this life, we want what we want and we want it now. We are a society that's short on patience and we are used to getting what it is that we want. So some of the benefits of diet and exercise, pretty much common sense. You've got stronger muscles and bones, leaner bodies, uh, lower risk for type two diabetes, 15% uh, of our population between the ages of 6 and 11 ages are obese. And those numbers are rising. And look at everything that obesity can lead to. You've got insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, asthma, hypertension, high total and LDL cholesterol and triglyceride levels in the blood, low HDL cholesterol levels in the blood, sleep apnea, early puberty, orthopedic problems, non-alcoholic statiohepatitis, lots of things that if you don't take care of those in childhood, as you get older, can really cause um, health complications. So it's not just, uh, you know, children grow in, in every which way, cognitively, morally, socially, physically. The environment we provide for them can help aid in the development in each of these departments. I mean, think about it. If we were to leave it up to the kids, do you think they're gonna choose an apple or Cheetos to snack on? That's why it can't be left up to the kids. The caretaker has to be the one, even though it's grueling and it's exhausting, but we've gotta be the ones to provide the good options. We can't leave it into the hands of the kids. All right, so to those of us that didn't know it, there actually are some pros of video games or some good things about it. Um, for example, there's evidence that video games can increase the size and efficiency of brain regions related to video spatial skills. It's also been found that playing video games affects attention. And some studies found that gamers show improvements in several types of attention, such as sustained attention or selective attention. Um, the brain regions involved in attention are also more efficient in gamers and require less activation to sustain attention on demanding tasks. Hand-eye coordination, problem-solving skills, those are all, also things that kids can um, experience when they do play video games. Uh, video games can serve as a safe babysitter. And what I mean by this, I mean, when my husband and I are gone during the day and my children are home by themselves, even though we have a trampoline outside, things that they can do outside, going for a walk, I don't want them doing those while we're at home, while we're not at home, because, you know, if something were to happen to them, um, whether they could get to a phone to call 911 if they needed to. So when on times that we are gone, I actually encourage them to stay inside and on their electronics. Now granted, I encourage them to read a book or do some drawing or coloring, and I think they do that for about five minutes, but they're gonna spend the rest of their time doing um, doing the, the things that they enjoy doing. And like I said, it's not just video games. My daughter, she's into um, um, you, watching YouTube and playing Roblox. Robux, I don't even know how to say it. Anyway, um, and then, you know, the other thing, like for example, where we live, we don't have, my, my kids don't have a lot of friends around. We don't live in a neighborhood. So when my son puts those headphones on, he's got all his friends right there with him that he can play with. And it's hard to compete with that, but I'm, I'm fortunate that he has that as an outlet because otherwise he wouldn't get to see his friends very often. Uh, okay, so on the flip side of this, the bad things about gaming. It's been shown that violent games can increase aggression in some children. I mean, if you look at some of these games, there is blood and body parts flying everywhere. And, 
you know, I can hear my son yelling, oh, kill him, kill him, you know, go get him. It's, um, it, it can make your little mother's heart just kind of hurt just a little bit, um, but it's part of the game. Um, it also can provide a false sense of reality. So if they are constantly winning, if they're constantly in control in this uh, virtual world, you know, how much of that affects them when life doesn't go that way in reality. Um, also, if they're spending lots of time away from family, being in their room, by themselves, playing these games, it can really interrupt family time. And not only that, but video games are expensive. The whole setup, whether it be a computer or Xbox or PlayStation, the Nintendo Switch, I mean, they're not, they're not cheap. And then you add on each game that they want to get, $65 for a game. And then even worse, we have made the mistake of giving my son a credit card to buy something online. And before you know it, whether he does it on purpose or not, of course he says he does not, he's charging, um, pur making purchases. I have seen where, I d there have been times where I do believe him where it was done unintentional, but yet we'll get in, you know, $50 deducted from our bank account on something he accidentally purchased. And then it's exhausting because you've got to call Apple or Microsoft and argue with them about it. And anyway, so yes, it, it can be a very expensive, expensive ordeal. And then obviously if children are spending too much time on their video games as opposed to doing reading or studying or something like that, it can hurt their academics and it can become an addiction. Um, I'm going to attach a, a checklist um, for a way that if somebody is worried about video games becoming an addiction that they can check off and then go seek help for. So what's the solution? What do we do about this? everything in moderation a little bit of this a little bit of that i mean you hear stories about children that have such strict households they're not allowed any junk food they're not allowed any time on electronics well what do they do the minute they get a little bit of uh, independence or they leave the house they gorge on these things because they've craved it. They want to see what it's about. They want to know what their friends are doing, everything like that. So I don't believe the solution is to totally deny the children, children of the things. And besides, let's face it, it's, it's this, it's our world now. Look how much that we as adults use computers and rely on technology for work and school and everything else. So I don't believe in totally keeping them away from it, but in moderation, setting some time limits and sticking to those time limits. And that's probably the hardest thing that I have found in setting time limits is how do you keep track of what it is that you do or how much time that they do spend on the games? Um, yeah, on a side note, have you ever watched the show Return to Amish? These children that grow up in these Amish communities where they're not allowed anything, you know, the minute they get older and get a little independence, so many of them cho choose to leave the, the setting because they want, they want these things that other kids have. Um, fortunately, games are um, rated now. So making sure that your children stick in keep it in age appropriate or play their age appropriate games. I think that's another solution to making sure they're not being exposed to something that they shouldn't be just yet. Um, again, it's hard because not all parents will do that. So say your friend goes and spends the night at a, or say your child goes and spends the night at a friend's house who is allowed to play these older games. And all of a sudden they have a blast playing Call of Duty and they want to shoot up people and everything else. So they come home and they start pressuring you about it and it's it, kids can wear us down. We know that for sure. But sticking to age appropriate games and then sticking to your guns is is something that you can it, it can be done. It's exhausting. It's hard work, but it can be done. And then when it comes to um, diet, you know, this is another really hard one. How do we govern our children's diets? without either making an issue of it that could possibly lead to an eating disorder disorder as they get older, 
or constantly nagging them about they about what they put in their mouth? And I feel like the answer to that is teaching them, educating them, teach them the food pyramid, teach them what we try to have as far as healthy fats and whole grains and dairy in our diet and everything else. And again, you know, back to the moderation thing. Um, I'm not going to keep just carrot sticks for my children to eat in the house because A, that's no life to live. And B, you know, when they go to a friend's house or when they leave the house, they're going to want to gorge themselves. In fact, true story, growing up, we had a neighbor whose mother was a dietitian and she was very hard on her daughter and didn't let her have anything. We caught her at our house. She brought her backpack, went into our pantry when nobody was looking, took a bunch of our junk food, went into our bathroom and was eating, shoving as much of it as she could in her mouth because she was so desperate to have to have these treats. So I learned right away that that's really not a, a solution. So having some uh, foods maybe that aren't that great for you in the house, but again, setting limits on how much that, that the you know children can have of it. But also providing a, being a good example, you know, letting, letting your children see you eat your uh, fruits and vegetables along with the rest of your meal. Um, not harping them on them all the time, but just showing them the way that we need to eat to take care of uh, to take care of our body and something else I push on my children when they talk about their you know when they're hungry I ask them are you really hungry or are you bored because a lot of times kids when they are home alone watching their tv playing their games it's not that they're hungry but they're just bored that they want to eat something so really distinguishing the difference and if you're bored find something to do and the other thing is getting lots of water. I know um, I read a fact that a lot of times when people think that they're hungry, they're actually just dehydrated. And if they go drink a large glass of water, the hunger subsides. And that's just a, a you know a much better option. So it, it's a definitely a tricky balance, but I do believe that it can be done. Fortunately, our society is really jumping on board with uh, some of these changes and kind of promoting a healthier lifestyle. You know, for example, you've got fast food chains that are starting to offer healthier options when fast food is just kind of your necessary option for the world that we live in. You've got programs such as NFL Play 60, which suggests 60 minutes or more of physical activity a day for kids. The Presidential Youth Fitness Program, which is a fitness education and assessment that is done in schools. And Let's Move, you know, Michelle Obama's uh, program meant to reduce childhood obesity and inspire a healthier lifestyle by encouraging healthier food in schools, better food labeling, and more physical activity for children. So it's great. And I found this picture um, when I was about to grab a sugary soda, speaking of practicing what you preach. And, uh, you know, even as you're reaching to grab your, your soda, there's a sign saying balance what you eat, drink, and do. There's no doubt that parenting is the hardest job in the world. It's exhausting, it requires patience, and a lot of the hard work isn't rewarded. I mean, let's face it, kids don't appreciate rules. But again, when they're growing up in our household, it is our job to teach these things to the best of our ability. I mean, don't get me wrong, we're probably all screwing up our kids, but it's just to what degree. And I think as long as the lines of communication are open and you encourage to the best of your ability and minimize the junk food that you have in your house, the time spent on electronics. You know, then when you, when everybody is home, if they've been on electronics all day, let's take a break. Let's all go outside and throw the baseball around or bump the volleyball around or some, you know, something like that so that kids do have a balance between the two. It can be done, you're not in it alone, and it really helps to have other friends and other parents to bounce ideas off of. Good luck, everybody. We can do this.